Shalom, everyone. Shalom. I want to welcome everyone to the house of the Lord Chief of Israel. I'm Elder Michael Johnson. And before we actually uh, get started, before we get started, we um, I do want to make an announcement. So after the teaching, as we go in the back and we do questions and answers, uh, we actually have some gentlemen over here. And um, I'm pretty sure that they might not put anything in the chat, but they over here. And they from the church of christ they're from the churches of christ and they for whatever reason they decided to seek me out and they wanted to challenge me and wanted to have a conversation with me based on saying that the doctrine that is taught over here is incorrect and theirs is correct so i just want to let you know that 
right after the teaching. And as I spoke to one of them last night, where he's sitting there saying that they don't fear, or he said personally he didn't fear me, but he didn't want me to select any topic whatsoever, not one topic. And um, he that's showing a sign of nervousness because they took all the time on yesterday to go through a lot of videos, but for whatever reason, they choose not to make sure they can get back in contact. So as I told him and as I make this clear, I'm going to put this up here because I'm very upfront because they said the first time that they wanted to make sure I didn't take down a video if they go live with me to where I take down a video because they didn't want to embarrass me. And I'm very upfront about what I do. But just like they like to go against uh, camps and different things of that nature. But just as we always know, I'm not a camp. But you found the right place to where we can get the truth. So if you are the Church of Christ, and I'm talking to Keith, I'm talking to Henry, I'm talking to Robert, Stephen, they have this one guy, Javier. He's a Latino who has nothing to do with the Bible. You come in the back today, I'll show you why, but we're going to go live. I'm going to do everything publicly to make sure nothing will come down, as you guys said. But just as I'm saying, if you are the Church of Christ, number one, and if you are a Christian, and this is from any doctrine that you come from, your doctrine is an error and it is a lie. And if you have a problem with that, <clears throat> my email is right there. Elder.mjohnson at kjbu.org. You can send it. But if you like, you can come to the back area right after this teaching. And we can schedule a date right before I do the questions and answer period. Because just to clearly let you know. You came over to the right place to where you want to challenge someone based on doctrine. And just as you said, and just as I said, I don't debate. Why well, debate something that's, that, that's true and factual in the Bible? It's no, it makes no sense. But what I will show you is that your doctrine is in 100% error. And this is for any church of Christ or any church that's sitting there saying they had the right doctrine and they saying they're Christians. So if they saying they're Christians, this is the thing we're going to make sure is taken care of. We want to make sure that all this is correct. So with that, I will make that announcement to where you can come back later again and we'll take care of it. But we're going to deal with this other thing that we have going on on the teaching which is even part of it is the two Jesus and these two Jesus has a lot to do even with their doctrine so it's really interesting that they even came up with this for this week because this is the issue right here in front of us the two Jesus Jesus versus Jesus but showing you what's going on. So we have a, the war of two Jesus in scripture and we need to find out what is going on. Now, many people will tell you it's not two in the Bible. Many people will hold to it. It's not two Jesus in the Bible. And that shows even more so people will err in scripture because both of them are there. They there, you can see them clearly but if not, we're going to go through here and I want to make sure that each and every person have their pencils and papers and you, you be able to jot this down. Be able to jot it down to where we can go through and clearly get the understanding on what is happening. Because many people all over the world has always worshipped the other Jesus. 
So we want to make sure that we clearly get this as we go through. Now, as I said, many people are of the Christian faith. We have quite a bit of people and it's more than 2 billion people that is of the Christian faith. Just because you are that large in number do not make you correct. This is why you have 45,000 plus different denominations of that religion which is making no sense. But we're going to go through this and we're going to look at this and we're going to dissect it. And we're going to find out this because this is a revisit, but we're just going to dig a little bit deeper on this same topic. So as we go through this, we'll get the understanding all together. So the first thing, what we really want to know is this other Jesus this other Jesus, because Yahweh Shai or Jesus, and I'm going to use mainly Jesus through this teaching to where we can clearly understand what is happening. And we know this one, that Jesus, he said this in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. He made this clear. He said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I don't care if you dislike it. I don't care if you try to make it say something else or whatever. He's telling you out his own mouth. I don't care how you look at it. And people will run over to Paul and say, well, Paul said this. And Paul said that, which Paul also tells you. He only speak to them who knows the law. But this man right here is telling you, right out of his own mouth, he only came to the house of the lost sheep of Israel. And people try to join every other thing with it. This is the problem that we go through today. And then they want to sit there and say that Jesus came to save the entire world, which is a lie. We're going to find all these out because he's telling you right out of his own mouth. I am not sent, but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's all he's sent to. We're going to see some of this and Christian faith believe they are righteous. In their faith, they believe they're righteous. So I want to show you something. We're going to look at something to see what's happening there. In he said this also when we look at this in Luke chapter 5 and verse 32 to show you again what Jesus came to, to do. Because just like I said, I'm gonna use Jesus here because we it's a it's a it's a challenge between these two. But he also said that he says, I come not to call righteous. Call the righteous. He didn't come to do that. But sinners to repentance. He called them to remembrance. Because you got a lot of people believe they are righteous in their own mind. And every man has fallen from the glory of God. For every man have sinned. And this is one of our biggest problems that we have. And they will sit there and the same as the one gentleman I talked to last night. He sit there and said that he's only worried about saving souls. The only one I know can save a soul is Christ. But somehow he didn't put himself in the position of Christ saying that he's saving souls and he ain't saved his own. But he's saying he's saving souls. These are the things, these are the problems that we have with people when they think they become teachers. And he's telling you, he has not come to save the righteous came to save sinners so we need to understand this because we need to know and we're going to figure out something right at the beginning on why we had the issue because the first thing I'm going to ask you and you on your note paper you say what do Jesus actually mean the transliteration of the word Yahweh Joshua what do all that mean? What do Jesus mean? This is the focus that we need to have. 
and it means salvation. Jesus means salvation. That's the point of the entire thing. We're going to look at some of this. We're going to look at this over here in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. It says the same thing. We're going to see this here and, we, and get the understanding. It says, and she shall bring forth a son. And that son is a servant. But it's going to tell you this even clearer. It says, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, salvation. And he shall save his people from their sins. Exactly what he's saying over here. He did not come to call the righteous. He came to save sinners. As he's just, you just seeing right here what he's talking about, because he's telling you more over here. He said, I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, who are sinners. To save them from their sin. And now just to make sure we clearly get all this, what he's talking about. And we need to understand a few things as we go through here. That's why we're going to take our time. We're going to walk through this. We need to know what salvation actually is. We need to know how it functions. We need to know how it works. See, this is what teachers and so-called preachers out there don't do. But we want to tear it down. So we need to know what salvation is and how it works is what we want to do. And what a lot of people like to do, they like to hoop and holler, raise their voice and be very voiceful when they do that as if they pushing something across besides letting the spirit move them. And then you hear that voice might rise and they might get something in that moment, but just to rise your voice up just to make your point across still don't make it intelligent choice on what, on your words you're using. This is why we have an issue here. So we're going to look at what salvation is because we want to understand it as we go through. <clears throat> So salvation, I want you to write it down again, and we're going to look at it. See, salvation means deliverance. You keep that, you keep that in your notes. It's deliverance. That's what salvation is. And salvation or deliverance comes in many different various forms and kinds of different things. We're going to see what some of them are. We're going to see it as we go through the teaching. And this works out in many different ways because you might need a deliverance of a healing from a disease. You need deliverance from different forms of that. You might need a deliverance to where you, in your travels to where you can be the fell in snares and you need deliverance. You can need deliverance where you are bound up in different ways. You need deliverance. You can fall into perils and in different ways and things that didn't happen different ways where you have became a sinner. You need deliverance. So you need a deliverer. You need salvation. It's exactly what he's talking about here the entire time. Exactly what he's talking about the entire time. This is why the same guy, his name was Simon. He said this about this same child. And you're going to see why he called the child salvation. We're going to see this here. We're going to look at Luke chapter 2 and verse 30. He says this. And this guy named was Simon. We're going to see. I can go up a little bit and let you see it. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do, we're going to go head on up and see it. I'm going to start there at verse 25. It says, and remember, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon. And the same man was just in devout, waiting on the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. Now, this was this man. But once he sit there and... Once they took that child in there and doing other customs of the law. And when they was coming out, this guy, Simon held Jesus. And you're going to see what he says here. here. We're going to look at verse 29. I'm going to read verse 30. It says, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation and who he seen was Jesus. He seen Jesus. To show you the focus, 
on what that word actually saying and why Jesus is there to show you what's going on and why it's there. So the image is salvation and the image is deliverance. So if you're seeking salvation, then you need to know what you're seeking is being delivered. Let's look at something over in, um, in Psalms. We're going to look at Psalms and we're going to go through this in chapter 31. We're going to look at this in verse chapter 31. And we're going to trickle down and run around this a minute for. We're going to look at 31 in verse 1. And it says, In thee, O Spirit of God, in thee, O Spirit of God, I will put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. He didn't come to get to come get those righteous people, but he came to get sinners. And if you already figure you righteous, that's why he said that you got your righteousness. He got his. That's why this even says it in that matter. Deliver me in your righteousness. Don't live, Don't try to deliver me in mine, which he's not going to do it anyway. The spirit of God whom we trust. You have to put your entire life for him to deliver you in his righteousness. So we need to be doing something to be saved because that's what we want. This is what we seeking. This is what we always look for. To deliver us in his righteousness. So being saved and being delivered from what? See, that becomes the key. Delivered and saved from what? We have to put our trust in him. Let's dig a little bit more into Psalms. And it still had this conversation. Psalms chapter 12. We're going to pick it up. At verse 7. You're going to see more of this being saved. It says, Thou shalt keep them, O Spirit of God, thou shalt preserve them as saving from this generation forever. But why? Let's look at it. Tells you this in verse 8. It said, The wicked walk every side with when the vilest men are exalted. Exactly the point. The vilest men. These are men, which is kind of weird when you look at it, but but it's telling you in paleo, it's telling you these are worthless workers of sin. That's all that's saying. The worthless workers of sin. The vilest men. They just do all these things. So actually let me go here. We're gonna look at this all together and, and we're gonna see what's going on here. And in Psalms 59. We're going to pick it up at verse two. And you still see this deliverance that's going on. And it's saying, deliver me from workers of iniquity, from these acts of sin. Save me from bloody men, from lifeless men. This is what this is telling you all the way across. I come to these house of the lost sheep of Israel. And the main thing, I didn't come to get the righteous. He didn't come to get those because if he came to get those down, what he going to do with his righteousness and you, and he, you're going to do your own righteousness. No, he came to get in his way, not in your way. So if you saving people, you say, I don't know what you saving people from. So I don't know cause whatever yours is. I don't know. Cause it could be in the tent meeting or whatever you're going to call it. That's, I don't know what that is. Because the Spirit of God, you had to put 100% trust in Him. And He can deliver you from where you need to be delivered from. In Psalms chapter 37, we're going to pick it up a little bit more in 37 verse 40. It says this, and it's clear. It says, in the Spirit of God should help them in deliver them he shall deliver them from the wicked 
and save them because they trust him. You see how clear this is. When you see this one, Jesus is just telling you about salvation. That's it. It's not talking about a man. It's talking about salvation being delivered. And he's telling you, you see all this here and the spirit of God is the one going to do it for you. The spirit of God is the one going to do that for you. He can preserve you against everyone that walk on every side that is evil. But you have to put your trust in him. So you can't, you can't sit there talking about I'm timid and I kind of trust you, Lord, but I don't want to really run with your, okay, either you run in 100 or you got to run to the other side. And the main part that we got to mean remember on this is who and what God is. Who and what God is and what he's going to do for us. Making a lot of this and helping us out on some of this here. We're going to see this. Second address and we're going to pick it up at chapter 16. It says this. 16 and verse 74 It says, Hear, O ye, my beloved, my promised one. And why it says that, I'm going to show you why he's saying it even in that manner and why I even said that. Just to, I'm going to make sure we're going to prove everything right up front to where we know what's going on. In, Psalm, in Proverbs chapter 8, picking up at verse 17, it says right here, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. And he says, O oh, ye my promised ones. That's why he's saying that. This is why that's being said. And it says this, said the creator, remember the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same, from the same wicked things, the same wicked people. They're trying to do you wrong. He'll deliver you from this. Salvation. He loved them that love him. But we got to be obedient to him as we doing this. Because he's saying this. He says, and be not afraid, neither doubt, for God is your guide. This is who we got to put all our trust in. And most people don't know who that is and who they put the trust in. They don't know who that trust is in. But he says this. And we got to put that trust there. We got to put that trust there. And we're going to figure out something. It says, and the guide of them who keep his commandments and precepts, saith the creator God. So we need to know who this is. We need to know clearly who this is. Because he said, don't be afraid of no one. So we need to find out who this person is. We just call him the guy. So let's go over here. We're going to tear down a few things. We're going to get to know who he is. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 6. and We're going to pick it up at verse 7. Now, he says this, this, this guy, this guy who's going to deliver us, the guy who's going to bring salvation, this guy, Jesus, who's just saying he's going to bring salvation and deliver us from all these, these issues. It says, and I will take you unto me for a people and I will be to you a God. But who is this guy? Look at this. Let's move back a little bit. It says, and I will appear. I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. That's how I appeared to them, by their name. He said, but by my name, Jehovah, I was not known to them. That's interesting, isn't it? 
but he's going to clear up some things. Same way we need to be delivered. The same way that we were talking earlier, how we can run into problems. And as we going through this world, we're going to run into oppositions and different problems and different issues. We need to deliver. So we got to look at this. Let's drop down to verse seven again. And he's going to say that. He says, I'm going to take to you, take to you to me for people and I will be to you a God. And ye should know that I am the spirit of your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And he's delivering us. So as he's sitting there saying, he says, and I will bring you unto a land concerning which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, and I will give you for inheritance. I am the spirit of God. So we need to figure out <laughs> what is this? Is this a a walking man? Is this what people will tell you? Is this a man that's walking up and down the street? And he's sitting there saying he's the spirit of God. So we need to figure out something. Again, we're going to walk through this and we're going to make sure we all understand it. We're going to go to Wisdom of Solomon. And we need to figure out what's going on because we're going to see some issues going to start popping up. And we got to make sure we latch on to the right one. In Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18, and we're going to look at verse 15. It's already highlighted. It says, Thy almighty word leap down from heaven out of thy royal throne, comparing as a fierce man of war into the midst of the land of destruction. That's that guy right here. That's this guy. That's that guy. The almighty word leap down. And they're going to make this word. They're going to sit there and say, this is flesh and bone. And that's a lie. That's not the truth. But he's saying he's going to deliver us. So we need to figure out all this was going on. What was happening? Because he's already said this when we just looked at it. We looked at seven, second address. See, in second address, he made this clear. Second address, chapter 16. He made this clear. <clears throat> and we don't want to sit there and get this tripped up. Because <clears throat> he said one thing. He said, and guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, said the creator God, let not your sins weigh you down. And let not your iniquities lift up themselves. We're clear here. So we must keep his commandments and precepts. Not sitting there. Let any man just tell you anything. Telling you lies and all these weird things. It's the word of God that's going to save you. So we must keep his commandments. We must keep his precepts. And we cannot let our thoughts of sin take us over and start forgetting. <clears throat> because his word is not playing with anyone. He even says this when you look at this and get a better understanding. We're going to go to, Matt, go to um, Exodus chapter 23 and look at verse 21. And you'll see the main thing here it says, "Beware of him, who that word, the word that's coming down, beware of him, and obey his voice, provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my way, my name is any. He didn't come down to be buddy buddies with you that's what that that's what that means. That's why I'm telling you right up front, beware of him. Come down to be chummy chummy. Came down because you're lost. You came down because 
we sit there and we done went out the way. And he already telling us he ain't pardoning anything. And transgression is forgetting and violating God's laws on the on this journey. This is what a lot of us do. See, we have this problem where we always think our poop don't stink. This is one of my biggest problems. Our poop all of a sudden don't stink. And we go our own way. And the Bible is telling us right out, beware him. And obey his voice. Provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions. For my way is any. Meaning this. To give you the deeper part of this. You're not going to change his way. His way is going to stay one way. And what he tells you. You better remember it. This is what he's talking about. He's very upfront. You try to change it. You're going contrary to what he's saying. So we understand these things and we know what's going on. So we see that God in his guide is telling us whose way we need to go. And it's only one way. But they tell you many ways. They got 45,000 different ways to get to God that they will tell you. They'll tell you their way is the right way, but the other one way is the same way, but they all still Christian. This is the problem. This is what people do when we have that problem. So he says this, and that's why he's saying, beware and don't provoke him. Don't get nothing out, 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 out of context with him. Don't sit there and trip with him. Because same thing, even with those gentlemen that's over here, I promise you they're going to learn something here today, whether they like it or not. In Luke chapter 9, verse 3, tells you this. It's very upfront here. And why he's saying you got to be obedient to this. He said, under, he says, take nothing for your journey, neither staff, nor stripe, nor neither bread, nor money, neither two coats apiece, two types of doctrines. Don't you take any of that with you. So if you can't take no money with you, why are you going to a place and they want your money? So you need to think about that. When you on this journey in life and you saying you're going to follow Christ and you want this type of salvation where he's saying he's going to guide you where you need to go. And he's telling you, don't you take no script, no bread, neither money, neither two coats of peace. Why in the world are you going into a place and they send that they're asking for a tithe or an offering. And you don't supposed to have no money. You, you figure that one out. Figure it out. You don't supposed to have a dime with you and you going in there. Well, I need to write a check. I need to write a check. How much he said he need? Let me write that check out. He said you don't supposed to have no money with you. And you got on two coats sitting there talking about you love Christ. And you and you sitting there giving this man money talking about he trying to build the kingdom of God. How you going to build it? You don't supposed to have no money. He said, you got to obey that voice. It's telling you right up front, obey the voice. What he said. But what we do, we work contrary to it. We work contrary to it. And what Jehovah is doing is taking us on a journey. So you can't take nothing with us. We got to go a certain way. In fact, we got to look at this even a little bit closer. Because that's Jehovah. Remember that's the, remember who it was. Remember who that was. And he's bringing us somewhere. So we'll find some of this in Isaiah chapter 12, picking up at verse 2. And we're going to highlight it so we know. It says, remember, God is my salvation. Remember that. God is. He is. He sent word down to guide us on the journey. Think about that. He sent the word to guide us. 
he's salvation. And we put in 100% trust. I will trust and not be afraid. He already told us don't be afraid of them. He's, he, did not he say that? Yeah. <laughs> so some, uh, what do it say right here? It says, be neither afraid their, uh, their doubt. Telling you right up front. God is your guide. So if we put 100% trust in him, we're good. We're good. So if that's the main thing and not be afraid, it, but then it goes here. Remember, don't forget for the spirit of God, Jehovah. Remember that guy? Remember that guy? I just showed him to you. Is my strength and my song. He also is become. You haven't figured this out. Tell them if they don't like it, they can tear it out their Bible. Easiest way to do it. Tear it out their Bible. Better yet, go out on Christmas and go scratch it out of all the Bibles in the world. They say that Santa guy can go through and go through everybody's house. Y'all go through everybody's house and scratch this become out. Because your whole will become. Telling you he ain't God. But people will tell you he is God. But he's telling you right there. And be, he become my salvation. He become your deliverance. It's right up front. And he's going to take us to God. Let's, let me let me let me let me build on this and we're gonna get some understanding. Make sure we get this all together. I'm gonna go to First Peter chapter three. Go down to verse eighteen and pick this up. <clears throat> the same guy. We I'm gonna highlight this guy. The same guy, Spirit of God, Jehovah. For Christ, that's who he is, Christ, Jehovah, same thing. They didn't know it. But it says, also have once suffered for sins, coming down here to get us. And just, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. got to follow him. We got to, got to obey that voice. Keep them free. We got to follow him. And when we go on this journey, we can't take nothing with us. And that he might bring us on that journey and get us to God being put to death in flesh, but quickened by the spirit. We got to kill this flesh as we on this journey. So Jehovah came down and suffered on this journey to bring us to God, just and unjust. But we recognize that we are sinners, not righteous. By killing off this flesh and this flesh in pursuing of our soul. This is the whole thing we need to be doing. So when you see salvation, Christ, Jesus, Yahweh, it all means one thing, salvation, saving us from our sins. And we're going to go, go, go way more into this thought. And we're going to get a better understanding on this. We got to get a way better understanding of this because the same as others, same as other people has seen us and they see us in captivity. You can go to Deuteronomy 28 and you'll see it. But people see us in this captivity. If people see us with even having unjust treatment. Those same people will see us receiving salvation. They're going to see it. They're going to see this same salvation coming. Let's look. Let's, let's run over here to... Baruch real quick. We're going to look at something. We're going to look at Baruch and we're going to go over here to chapter 4. 
chapter 4, we're going to pick up something here. We're going to go to verse 24. It says, like comparing now, like comparing now, as now, comparing. It says, the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity. They, these people have seen it. They've seen this captivity. They've seen what's going on with us. They see we've been unjustly killed, unjustly jailed, unjustly for jobs. We get unjust everywhere. They've seen this captivity. Seeing it going on today. It says, it says the same thing here. It says, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our God, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of, of the everlasting. This knowledge going to come. All we got to do is follow the voice and make sure that we're doing these things. Make sure that we going through this. Because that great glory is going to come upon us. So we're going to see even more. Let's check this out here. We're going to go down in. Verse 20 says, My children suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from, from God. But thy enemy have persecuted thee. But thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. People got to all this all screwed up because they think we're going to be stepping on their neck and all this. And that's not what that said. <clears throat> that ain't even what that's saying. Because we have suffered patiently the wrath that came upon us from God. <clears throat> and righteously so. However, the enemy that has persecuted us for no reason. Shortly. will see their destruction. And will tread upon me stepping upon them. As if they was part of the road. Technically, that's all that's saying. Trading upon their neck, we're gonna be walking on them like they like they don't even exist. Deliverance from my enemies, salvation from all these social experiences of the world. People be joining with one to another. See, we have to remember the reason why Christ came. He came to save us from our sins and to join us. He came to join us to something else. We came to be joined to another government. We came to be joined to another world. We came to be joined to another city. Not this city here. We have a lot of things that goes on in, in life and we got to know what they are. And while we on this journey, we can't take nothing with us. That's why he says, don't, don't love the world. In Revelation chapter 21 and verse 1, you see that it says, And I saw a new heaven and new earth. The first heaven and first earth was passed away. And there was no more sea. Wasn't no more people. Wasn't no more earth. Wasn't no more heaven. And all the people was gone. And then it says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from out of, out of heaven, prepared, comparing the bride adorned for her husband. You got a lot of people believing they're going to be raptured up. And heaven is coming down. So I don't know what they're going to be raptured up to. Because it's saying it's coming down. And we're going to see something to make sure we're really clear. We're going to drop this to verse 3. It says, And I, including I heard a great voice, including I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Remember the tabernacle of God is with man. It's a serious statement there. That's a serious statement. Serious, serious statement here. This is a serious. He said now the tabernacle of God is with men. And, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and, and God himself. Shall be with them and be their God. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, we 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 have a problem, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna walk this down. And let's look at something. I want to show you something to make sure that we all on the same page. We're gonna go to Matthew. We're gonna look at Matthew, and we're gonna look at Matthew chapter three and verse seventeen. I want to show you something here. We're gonna go to three and seventeen, and seventeen is right there. Now, same thing. This voice. Once he was condemned. Once he condemned that flesh, he said, "And Lord, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, that word that came down, <laughs> the word that came down. Let me, let me, let me make sure we ain't, we ain't tripping on nothing. It says, and when Jesus, the same thing, when he was condemned, see, because most people don't know what baptized is, but that's what that's telling you. When he was condemned, because he had to condemn the flesh, went up straightway out of the water and lo, the heavens were open unto him in he saw the Spirit of God, the same guy we've been talking about the entire time. His name is Jehovah. That's, that's what we're talking about. And descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And that's why we're sitting there saying, it's not talking about a physical man. It's talking about the Spirit, talking about the Word. And it says, Lord, a voice from heaven came, a voice from heaven, saying, this is my beloved servant, who I'm well pleased, who is the Word of God, who is Christ, who is Jehovah. So we... We got to take this journey with him because he's going to guide us. Let's get a little bit more. Let's get a little bit more on this here. We're going to go over here to Isaiah where places they like to go and, and, and people mess it up. And we're going we're gonna to get clarity here on where they do. We're going to look at Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. Because just like I told you, he's taking us to a place. We got to go on this journey. We can't take nothing. The money here don't work there. The covering here don't work there. Keep that in mind. Let's look at this. Let's look at this all together. And why he's saying what he said. He says, for unto us a child is born. Yeah, to us. To us, a child is born. You have children, is born. But it's saying, unto us a son. It's telling you right here. It's given. This servant is given. In whom God is well pleased in. The word. I know. You, make sure y'all get this. Let's, let's, let's take our time. We got to walk through this. We got to walk through this. I want to make sure you get this. So when Jesus... Actually, let's go up one. We gonna go up one. We told you we gonna we gonna just. I'm, I got to take my time with this one. I want to take my time with it. And it's saying it says when Jesus answered and said unto him, "Suffer it be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness." Remember, he said he didn't come to save the righteous, but he came to save sinners. And that's why Jesus is saying this. He got to fulfill righteousness. You got to be baptized. Even though there was no guile found in his mouth and he didn't know sin. But flesh is sin. So he said, hey, I got to condemn this flesh too. I know I haven't sinned, but hey, John, I get it. But we do. I got to condemn this. We got to fulfill all righteousness or God can't accept me. I'm the Lamb of God. So we got to fulfill it, man. You, you, you do, man, go on, and, go, on and, go, on and, go on and dunk me, man. And he said, and then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, then when he condemned, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heaven were open. And then he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighted upon him. Unto us, that son is given. Now he's given. And what God said, and lo, the voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son who I'm well pleased. And this is what he's talking about. And he says more on this. He says, and the government should be upon his shoulder. And his way shall be called wonderful. Counselor, mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Now we should get it. So the city is ruled by the ways Wonderful counselor, the mighty God, 
the tabernacle of God is with men. He's telling you this over here. He's telling you this right over here. The tabernacle of God, let, let me say right here. So the tabernacle of God is you. It's with men. Some of y'all might have got lost. There. Let's 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 work this out. We got to work it out. So this tabernacle of God is dwelling with you, but you have to condemn the flesh. So we getting a better understanding of what's happening here. And let's find out something here in verse four. Let's let's work this out. Let's work this out. It says, and God shall wipe away their tears from their eyes. So he's going to wipe away the tears from your eyes. But we, I want to know what he's saying. So we got to investigate because we know. See, tears is telling all your worrying, your groaning and your wandering. We don't want it here and there. That's all tears mean. That's all it means. See, most people go into a concordance. It says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. It don't say seek ye out of the concordance, out of the strongs and read. That's why they going to always get this wrong. But he going to wipe away all your worrying, all your groaning, and all your wondering. And then he tells you this. And it says, from their eyes, from their understanding. And you know how um, people talk about um, on a, some some of these TV, TV shows, they say, and there's more. It's more. And there's more. It's more. Including there should be no more death, neither sorrow. Told you it's more. Told you it's more. Actually, this is. Let's look at this. Because um, as I'm going right now, I'm just going to where he's leading me. And he just lead me and I'm just going to follow right along. And I'm just going to follow right along. And we know one thing, and it says, neither shall there be no more pain for the formal things are passed away. Everything that was back here is gone. Why? For Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning that follow it. So we trying to get on that journey and get to there. Not here. Because I promise you and all you got to do is just sit down and think about it yourself. Is death in this world. I know you're sitting there. Yeah. Oh, why are you saying that? You know death. We got we got cemeteries. Yeah. Is there sorrow in this world? Yeah. Why 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 is Elder Johnson saying it? He knows it's sorrow. Yeah, exactly. Is there crying? Yeah. Tell you what. <laughs> no more pain. Any more pain. I tell you the worst thing is, and some of y'all can agree with me. Tell you what, have you ever been walking in the house or somewhere kind of late and you hit your big toe or you hit your knee on something and it feels like the closest thing coming to death and it didn't even hit hard, but it feel like the closest thing to death. You sit down and just like, it just strikes your heart. Just, oh man, just like death is just coming to you. There ain't going to be no more of that. That's gone. That's done away with. Esau is the end of it. That's where we are right now. We in the world of Esau. Not what the camps say. This is Esau world. No, it's the ways of Esau is done. That's why he was red and hairy all over. He was covered in sin. It's telling you that, but they didn't get that. He was just covered in sin. That's all that red and hairy all over. That's all that mean. He was covered in sin. And Jacob 
was smooth, man. He was a smooth man. And he's the beginning that follow it. So Jehovah Christ is taking us on this journey. We can't take nothing with us. So I want you to keep that in, in mind. So since nothing can come with us, we got to know how Christ, uh, Jehovah, how this salvation is coming. Because he's coming and we got to obey his voice. Can't, we can't forget that. So let's look at something. We're going we're gonna to look at something all together. In Exodus chapter 2, I mean in 2nd of Jesus chapter 2, verse 36. Verse 36, it says this. <clears throat> it says this. It says, flee the shadow of this world. That's all we're doing. He's taking us on this journey and we can't take nothing with us. Don't go back into the house and get something. We can't take nothing with us. So we got to flee from the shadow of this world and he's taking us. Actually, better yet, think about how when they came to get Lot, they flee. Ain't no reason to look back. Ain't no reason to do it. Just get the mess up out of there. But we got to get up out of here. So we got to go on this journey. Can't take nothing with you. You got to keep going back there. Can't take nothing. You can't take no money. So if you stopping and paying money, you looking for another salvation. If you got money with you, you looking for another salvation. Because he said, don't take it with you. But let's keep going. Receive the joyfulness of your glory and testify my Savior openly. <laughs> oh yeah, my friend. We 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 gotta roll through here. We got to roll through this through this crazy place. But we gotta be obedient to the voice of God. Not following some man. Because if we follow a man, all you gotta do is ask the man, can you tell me? Since you got a phone, can you do you have heaven on your phone? Let me just see the directions. I promise you, he can't show it to you because he ain't never been to heaven. So you following a man and God came and said, I'm going to be your guy and you can find me in here. And we're going to follow this man who's going to pop up a tent, who's going to be in the building. Let's look at something. Let's look at something. We're going to look at something. We're going to drop down to Second Adrees chapter 7. We're going to pick it up at verse 6. And, and go from there. And, <clears throat> and we're going to start at verse 6 because we want to get the understanding why we got to go on this journey with Christ. He, gonna, he came to take us on our journey. We can't take nothing with us. It says, there is also another thing. Okay, because he's going to tell us about what, what it is. It says a city is built and set upon a broad, set upon a broad field, <clears throat> and it's full of good things. That's what we're trying to get to. That's what we're trying to get to. So, if we can get there, well, we got to get with Christ. We can't take nothing with us, but it's set upon a broad field. Actually, let me tell you what. Let's just do this. Let's do this. Well, I don't want to do that one. Let's do this one. Let's go back to Second Adrian. I want to. I want to just show you something. I want to show you something. We we want to go to Second Adrian chapter two. We're gonna look at verse thirteen, and then we're gonna come back over there. Because this is the problem. It says, "Go and ye shall receive pray for few days unto you, that they may be shortened. The kingdom." is already prepared for you. Watch. So we see the light. We just have to follow the light. Are you with me? And we pray that those days be short. We just walking and walking and walking. I know some of y'all complain. Have you ever seen a kid when they drive and they, they wake up? Are we there yet? We got to keep, we got to keep rolling. We got to keep rolling. Some of us got to roll for 30 more years. Some of them got to roll for 40, 50, 60 more years. Some of them going to be rolling for very few years. We just got to keep rolling. Got to just keep marching. Stay fast to what we're doing. Because the kingdom is already prepared. He's just waiting for everybody to get there the way we can all go in at one time. It's a beautiful thing. But he said, 
And it's on the broad field and full of good things. Full of good things. We get down to verse 7. It says this. Because now we're running into a few problems. It says, the interest thereof is narrow. This is why he's saying, we got to obey the voice of Christ. Keep his commandments and his precepts. We have to do that because this is the problem here. It's set in a dangerous place, <clears throat> is narrow, in a place to fall. Like comparing if, it's comparing something. And here's our problem. If there were fire on the right hand and on the left, deep water. We're going to tie that down to where we know what we're talking about as we go through. Because we got fire on one side. And we had deep water on the other. That's a problem. Let's look at I want to show you something. Just the way we can all keep the same look and the same understanding all the time. We're going to look at part of what this is talking about. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 13 just to show you what's going on. Matthew 13, it says this. We're going to go to Matthew 13, actually Matthew 13, 22. I want Matthew 22. We want this is why it says he also that received seed among the thorns. He heareth the word and for the cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches choke the word and become unfruitful. So as we're going on this journey, he, hey, sh- sh- come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Hey man, I, I can help you out. Yeah, man, hey, I can turn you on to some few dollars over here. Choke the word. You ain't following the word no more. For the cares of this world, you wait a minute. What? I can get I can get paid on man, you man, hey, we can pay you. And as he's going through this journey, I wanted you I want you to remember who who you're going on a journey with. I want you to know who's going on this journey, who's taking you on the journey. Just the way we have to keep keep this in mind in what's going on. In Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18, we're going to look at 15. Remember the almighty word leaped down out of heaven, as, out, of it, out of that royal throne as a fierce man of war into the midst of the land of destruction. He came down here to guide us through this world, taking us on a journey to get us around landmines and all these crazy things. And as he's doing that, we got some people is following the voice and then they get sidetracked because Jojo is standing up against the wall as we walking down that King's highway and sit there and hey, hey man, I got some of this over here. Huh? And we go right up over there and we get, we get a hold to it. We get a hold of these things. Next thing you know, for the deceitfulness of the riches, it didn't choke the word. He ain't gonna follow. Hey, I'll catch up with y'all later. Y'all go ahead and I'll catch up with you. What you you, you, you gonna turn up? Okay, I'll catch up with you. Now he didn't let it choke the word. We in the wilderness and now we're gonna stand on our own with this guy. But as I said, something don't you that don't forget. Don't forget this. See, we can't forget some things, and I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show you this. It's the main thing that you don't forget. We're going to go back to the second, and we're going to go back to Exodus. We're going to go right back down to 23. We're going to look at verse 21 to make sure we clearly get what's going on. So it won't be no excuse for us later. It said this. It says, beware him. And obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon you over forgetfulness. And my name, my way is in him. So the way that you need to go is in him. And we done sat right there and he's given us the direction saying, follow me. And we said that, no, 
Go ahead, I'll catch up with you later. Go ahead, we we I get with you. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead. I'll catch up with you. I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Let me see what he's talking about. Provoking him. To provoke the word. You got to be be very aware of Jehovah Christ and be obedient to that voice and don't provoke him. In fact, uh, let's look at it a little bit more. Let's grab let's grab some more here. We're gonna go to Luke and um, we're gonna look at chapter twelve. We're gonna look at twelve and we're gonna go to forty nine. And we're going to see here. 49. And, and, and watch. I want you to pay real close attention on what's happening here. It says, I am come to send fire on earth. Who? I come to send fire on earth. Including. Will I if it be already kindled. I'm, I'm, don't worry we're going to work everything out I'm going to make sure everybody have a clear understanding on what's happening and the reason he's saying this this way how can he come down and you already saying you righteous it's problem one he came down and you saying well I already got fire for you, for you God and as soon as that word you hear somebody hey psh, psh, come here bro and let me check, check this out you going over there in that pup tent. This little pop-up tent, you in there. Want to see what's going on in there. In the building. You want to see what's in the building. So, this is what happened. So many people will do this. But I beg to differ you. I'm going to show you something where it's hard for a lot of us, but a lot of us going to fall to this. We look at numbers and we're going to go to chapter 26. And I want you to remember some of our brothers, uh, Nadab and Abinahu. We're going to go to 26 and we're going to pick it up at 61. See, because they called themselves, they already had their fire kindled. And they're going to try to bring it to the Lord. And Nadab and Abinahu died when they offered strange fires unto the Spirit of God. So how can you sit there and he sent... I am come to send fire on earth. So he came to send this fire on earth, but you saying you already got yours kindled. Are you serious? Are you serious? You telling me your fire is kindled. He came to bring it and you saying I already got it. Jojo, Jojo giving me the word. Jojo giving me his form of the word. This is what we do. This is what we're good at doing. We're good at doing this. We sit there and believe there's nothing wrong with that. He didn't send fire. And the first thing we do is, oh, well, I got I got fire. But he got some more here. <clears throat> he gonna explain it. He says, but I have baptize baptism to be baptized with so he's talking about he have a condemn a condemning to be condemned with including how am i straightened until it be accomplished in this strength it's talking about afflicted and oppressed until it be completed this is what he's saying the problem is with the flesh. The problem is the flesh. Actually, let me let me let me, let me go here again. This this look at Romans a little bit. Let's go over to Romans. Cause I want to make sure we can't get out of nothing. Now, I like to make sure we can't we can't wiggle out of nothing. And it says, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. <laughs> it was weak through the flesh. So God sending his own servant, his own son into the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. You see, we can't get around it. 
So Christ didn't come to be buddy, buddy. See, but that's what everybody think. He came to be chummy, chummy, buddy, buddy. No, he came to get us from one end to the other. He already said that the entrance is narrow and it's full of dangerous places. And on one side is fire. On the other side is, is deep water. And somebody goes, come here, come here. And the first thing we do for the cares of the world on what he done told you, what he can offer you, then choke the word. This is what we do. We good at doing this. And then we think we we done went to Burger King. We can have it our way. So let me let me show you this and we're gonna march down through this. Cause I want you to clearly get what he's saying. He says, Suppose ye that I come to give peace on earth. Exactly what I was saying. You think he came to be chummy chummy, buddy buddy, friendly friendly, cootie cootie, cuddle cuddle. You can go almost in any pop tent. You can go almost into any church. And this is what they're going to tell you. He came to be chummy, chummy, buddy, buddy. To you. And he came to bring you peace. He came to put you on a journey. He came, told you to get your stuff. All that right there. Leave it. Don't you take nothing with you. But man, all I got is some shorts on in this shirt. You better bring your butt on. But I don't need leave that there. Sit there, me and my wife, we go through that all the time. She'll sit there and, you know, I love her to death, but, but she cracks me up. Sometimes I just have to laugh about it. So what I do, she, she, we, she be late. We be in a rush. We be in a... Same as yesterday. We running late. We doing something for her, but we running late. Just came off a little bit. We running late. So I'm talking to Elder Jenkins on the phone. Now she, we had a 10 o'clock appointment. 10 o'clock. So we going over it. Now it's 9.40, 9.45. And I'm telling you, babe, we need to come on if you're going to. So I go outside. See, I don't want to be inside because she'll try to set you up inside. Because then she'll still put it back on you. So I said, "Yeah, hey, you need to come on. So I go back in there. Sweetie, you see what time? She say, what time did you come down? See, it ain't matter what time I come down. I'm outside. I was already ready. I would like to down there at 930. I was already, I'm outside. Where you, what time you come down? It doesn't matter what time I came down. I'm ready. I'm outside. I'm waiting. But she running late. She wanted to do what she needed to do. See, when Christ comes, she can't do that. She got, she got to, hey, whatever you got in there, whatever you're doing, you, you got to, hey, got to go. Got to drop it. Roll. You know, we still got there. Was able to, they were still able to take care of us. Still took care of us way ahead of time. So it was all good. But, the thing is, we got to be ready. But people think that Christ came to give peace. And he didn't. It says, suppose ye that I come to give peace on earth. I tell you, he's telling you out his own mouth. Nay, no, he ain't did that. That's something that y'all done dreamed up. It says, but rather a division. He didn't came to bring a division between this. Meaning this all together. For, let me, let me highlight that. It says, for from henceforth, there should be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. Come on. No, I, I got to go. I got to go get my, um, my luggage. Hey, you better come on. It's going to be a division. In fact, he's going to go a little bit deeper with it. He's going to go a little bit deeper with it. He said, a father shall be divided against his son. 
Son, you better come on. Dad, please. I'm trying to finish this game. The son against his father. The mother against the daughter. The daughter against the mother. The mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law. The daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. He didn't come, he didn't come, he didn't come to sit there like, okay, I'm going to sit there and wait. He came to bring you on this journey to get you to the other side, to show you those good things on the other side. But some people going to let somebody whisper in their ear and it's going to become unfruitful because they looking at another type of salvation. They're looking for another type of salvation. So we need to see this, this guy over here, this, this one where, who hear the word and for the carers, he gonna whisper something in their ear. We need to see that guy. And why they gonna sit there and they gonna drag their foot. We need to know why. Why this happened? Why these things goes on this way? In Isaiah chapter 9, picking it up at verse 15, it says this, and it's real clear. The X is already highlighted. It says that it says, the ancient and honorable, he is the head, that's Satan. And it says in the prophet that teaches lies as he is the tail. This is clear. Clear in scripture. They're going to lie to you about all these things. And the first thing that we do is what? Put your ear to it. Well, let's just go in there and just listen to him. Listen to him for what? He's going to lie. He's taking you on a whole path and it's telling you he's taking you on the path to righteousness. He's taking you on the path to death. Salvation. And I'm going to make this real clear to everyone. Salvation is what you perceive salvation is. Either salvation you're seeking to what you're preparing for or salvation to what you're seeking now. It's one of the two. It's one of the two. In fact, let me show you something. See the same thing over here for the for for the word. Let me show you something. Let me show you something here. We're gonna look at Genesis and we're gonna pick it up at Genesis chapter three and verse four. Why? Because I want you to see it. I want you to see it personally. And it says this, it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, You should not surely die. That's what this is talking about. Don't tell you, you ain't got to catch up with them. I got you covered. I'll take you there. You ain't going to die. You ain't got to follow him. I know the way. For the cares of this world and the riches of it. And hey, but I got some stuff over here we can hook up with. What? I got some stuff over here we can hook up with. Are you serious? You ain't going to die. <laughs> you ain't going to die. You, he's trying to take you to this salvation. I'm going to take you. Don't even worry about it. But I'm going to show you. I got you. This is Satan. Satan do these things and he catch you up. He catch you up. Because you done heard that word and you, he, and you, don't, you like it. You ain't going to die. All you do is hang with me. And I got you. You hang with me and I got you. So this is what he does. His prophet then did this. The devil taketh him up into a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment's time. In a moment time. In the moment of time, he didn't show it to him. Didn't he just tell you this? The entrance there of a narrow and set in dangerous places to fall like as a, a fire on the left hand, on the right hand, and on the left is deep water. Didn't I just say, tell you this? He just told us this. But we want to listen to him because now the fire, which is the desire that he's going to show us, in a moment's time is what we get caught up in. 
I'm telling you this right here. So what he do is do this. I'm, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you with this ancient and honorable how he, how he prepares his boys. So in that moment's time, I'm gonna show you what he did. I'm gonna show you what he did for us. And we we told him, hey, go ahead, man, go ahead, y'all go ahead. We'll catch up with you. Go ahead, go ahead. We'll catch up with you. Really? Okay. Okay. So as we walking in this flesh and putting on this other covering and the works of the flesh are made known, which it is. Amen. That's your wife up there? No, dude, just tell her you stay back here. She, come on, come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Why? He didn't show you in a moment time, Susie. He said, man, see Susie over there? Susie seeing you when you were walking by. He said she wanted to get with you. She wanted to get with you, man. That one right there, man. She she wants you, but she wants you, man. Yeah, y'all go on. I'll, I'll, I'll catch you later. Showed him all the kingdoms of this world. Even the glory of them. I'll tell you even on the other side. Even the glory of this stuff. As you walking through there, you see all these men that pumping iron and looking good to you and they, and they show hey hey sister see that guy over there that boy he been looking at you pretty hard I know him good friend of mine he got a he got a nice Porsche over there he want to turn you turn you on and take you for a drive in this new ride by the beach He said that you cute. He, him? Yeah. Yeah. They, they got a party going on tonight. They're going to have a lot of good music. A lot of famous people. A lot of athletes. Going to have all kind of stuff there. Y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead. My, my feet hurt. Y'all go ahead. I'll catch up with y'all later. Mm-hmm. All uncleanness and lasciviousness. This is what we get caught up in. Because now he's showing you the kingdoms of this world. In a moment time. Idolatry, witchcraft, variance, ill emotions, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalings, and such like. So now in this world, they saying, well, you going there, this can't happen. See, I'm going to whisper that in your ear. You, you, okay, you, where you going? Where you going? You can't even hate people like that. I've seen you fussing with that one guy. Here you can hate. You can have variants. You can have ill emotions and wrath and strife and seditions. And if you get in trouble over here, you can lie. You can do all these heresies. You can do these things. You won't get in trouble. None of these things, you won't have no problems. And if you keep tripping, murdering. I'll tell you how to do it. And anything such like. I got a little tiny you hook them up. I seen you seen that girl. Yeah, I know you didn't like her. Talking about she could, she talking about she got this nice shape. Mm -hmm. You can envy over here. Kill her. You go ahead and murder the girl. In a moment's time, he done showed you all this. And you like that lifestyle. Oh, I, I, I like it over here. In a moment's time, he showed you this. And he said, now, the only thing you have to do while you're over here, you can stay over here as long as you want. Because I just need you to do one thing for me. One thing. And he's telling you right there. The devil said unto him, all 
this power I will give thee. You can kill who you need to kill. Don't if you envy him, she bought that card, take it. Kill her. All idolatry. You want that woman husband? Take him. You want to screw around with that guy? Take him. All uncleanness, you can do whatever you want. Worship with any idol you want. This is the power I got here. In all the glory, it says in the glory of them. All this is mine. He said, but I need you to do something. He said, and for that is delivered unto me. All this is delivered in my hands. All this. You see everything. Come here, girl. Come here. Do my toe. Clean my toes. Look at this. Look at him. Cleaning my toes. Watch, watch this. Hey, dude, come here. Clean my toes. Wow. Wow. See them two over there married? Come here. I'm going to have you tonight. But I'm married. I know it. But I'm going to have you. Okay. All this power, I give it to you. Same as I got. And the glory of it. Because all this stuff that you see is delivered to me. But I need you to do one thing. Whomsoever I will give it. You want this kind of power? I give it to you. And you sitting there, wow. Dang, he carry weight. He's carried some serious weight. But he tells you this. He tells you this. Watch this. I'm going to show you something here. We're going to go back over to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 5. So they see this. So... And then he tells you this. He said, for God do know that the day that you learn it, thereof, then your eyes should be open and, and, and ye should be as God knowing good and evil. You're going to be just like him. And I can turn you on to this world. He's taking you on this journey, but if you stop and you be with me, all this stuff I give to you. They tell him he's taking you on this journey of salvation. I know your feet hurt. I know, I know, I know you're having a problem. You envying them people doing this. I know this is an issue with you. That's why I called you. I said, come on over here. I got, I got something for you. I know you didn't like Croc Croc over there. You can kill him. All this stuff over here is, is given to me. But I need you to do something for me if you do this. And you're going to be just like a God. And all he's saying is this right here. Providing thou for that reason will worship me. All shall be thine. I'm going to give it all to you. You're going to be just like me. And this is the problem. That's why it chokes the word. And you see right here what she did. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, to her understanding, the tree was desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit and did learn of it. And gave also to her husband, and he did eat. That's all we got to do. I've been having my eyes on her. Oh, you got your eyes on her. I got my eyes on him. That's the role. This is what the devil has done to many of us. Offering us good things that we think is good. And it wasn't. So the problem becomes is this. They're going to catch you in these places. To deceive you in many different ways. And the Bible says this. The Bible is making something real clear for us. 
in Matthew chapter uh, 24. Matthew 24, we're going to pick it up at 23. And this is where they get you at. Then, if providing any man shall say, Lo, Christ is, here is Christ. He's telling you. Here's Christ. He's telling you right there. Hey, I'm hey, I'm it. Believe it not. He ain't salvation. He ain't the anointed one to get you where you need to go. It's, he, that's not him. Yeah, Shai is telling you up front. what this is going on up front you have men who them position themselves to do these things in fact uh, actually I want to tell you what let's bring this a little bit closer the men them position themselves to do this in Matthew chapter 23, we're going to look at verse 2. We're going to come back over here also. But we're going to look at this, and I want to show you something. These, these are who they men are. The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. They, they, they feel they carry the weight. They feel and they carry the weight now. Because they got you in a pop tent or in a building, and they got you. calling themselves they putting themselves in the seats of Moses creating laws that you don't even know about and putting those burdens directly on you once they got you off their path they got you and it tells you right here they're saying don't believe it they gonna catch you in there they saying lo Christ is here don't you believe it it's saying all for that reason whatsoever they bid you Observe. All you got to do is watch them. All you got to do is watch them. That observe and do. Because they ain't going to do what they're going to tell you what to do. They're going to tell you to do something. They're going to do something contrary. It says, but do not after their works what they say and do not. Because they ain't doing it. In fact, as I said, this is what they're going to do. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to born to, to be born and lay them on men's shoulders. We need to raise this money. We need, we need anybody who can sit there. You guys want to offer. We don't take up tithes and offering. We just take offerings. We don't take tithes. We just take offering. Did not he tell you don't take no money on this journey? So if you obey the word of Christ, don't you take no money with you to be giving it to him. He catch you every time. But he's going to lay that burden. We're going to tell you what, we need to build a resting place, a church over here. Really? How you going to build a church over there? I don't have no money. They're going to lay these grievous, heavy burdens on them. But they themselves would not move them with one of their fingers. They ain't going to put in a dime. They going to, you might see them right. Have you ever seen? I know y'all seen it. I know y'all seen it. I will even put y'all in there to show you how, how much people have seen it. You done seen preachers sit there. When they do the tithes and offering, you see them sitting up there and they want you, they want you to see it. You see them writing a the check. You see them writing a the check. And then they sit there and they give it to the deacon so he can put it in the offering. I know y'all seen it. I promise you, y'all know a bunch of y'all seen it. He getting that back. Plus yours. Why you think he ain't worried about giving it? He going to sit right there and write a check. And then he get a check. And, and some people sitting there, look at, boy, look at my pastor. He, he, he so dedicated. He giving it, look at him, giving this money to the Lord. No, he ain't. He just, he just, he just writing it for show. Cause he giving his money right back to him. And then he got yours. He ain't got to put his money up for that. For what? What are you saying? Paying himself? 
That don't even make sense. It's telling you. It's telling you what they do. It's telling you even here. It says, but all their works they do to be seen of men. Exactly what I'm talking about. Well, look at, oh boy, he, oh, pastor this, he, he put $500 in all. You think he worried about that? It's going right back in his pocket. Plus yours. Plus yours. They may broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. This is what they do. To all catch you in, to catch you up. Cause they, cause you don't went in there and you, and they telling you Christ is there and Christ is telling you, don't believe it. Don't you believe it. And we get caught up and then here go to, here go the biggest problem here. It says for there shall arise false Christ. See this right here. I want to just highlight just that one piece right there. See that with that S it ain't an apostrophe there. Cause it letting you know, they're all over the place. They all over the place. So it's saying false Christ, including false prophets. And it's doing the same thing here. Doing the same, I think. Letting you know that's plural. Meaning it's a bunch of them. Pop tents and churches all over the world. And they're going to show you these great signs. And wonders. In so much, if it were possible... They shall deceive the very elect. <laughs> Telling you. They're good at they're good at what they do. They good at what they do. And there's how we get caught up. I'll show you show you a little bit more. Show you a little bit more. We're going to go look at Mark and come back over there. Mark chapter 13. I'm going to pick it up at verse 23. Mark 13, 23. It says, but take heed. Remember, I have foretold you all things. He foretold us these things. What he's talking about over here. He foretold us this. Meaning he prophesied these things unto us already that was going to happen. And we see it as you walk out the house. Churches everywhere. Pop tents popping up everywhere. Lies everywhere. You got 45,000 different denominations of Christian religion. 45,000. 45,000. Of Christian religion. And then they all say they're right. And don't even know what Christian mean. And they say, hey, look, Christ is in this church. You, you personally need to think about that. If it was possible. So what they do, all they got to do is build a beautiful edifice for you. you oh, man, this is nice. And they done pulled you off the road. On the King's Highway, they done called you off of it. And they done got, and they done choked the word. Choked it. Remember, I have told you before. It says, wherefore, if ye shall say unto you. Unto you. He's in the desert. <laughs> Going out for it. Don't you go. And we go. Y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead. Huh? I'm going to stay back. Y'all go ahead. Remember, he is in the secret chambers. Man. We're going to have this. We're going to have this service. We're going to have it. We're going to pop up this tent. We're going to have this service. And guess what? The Lord is going to be in this place. Don't believe it. It's telling you. Believe it not. He's going to catch you. That's all he need to do. And the reason why I keep mentioning buildings, it tells you this. 
Yeah, like I say, people think Satan ain't good. Satan, Satan, Satan is masterful in what he does. We're going to look at Ezekiel. We're going to go to chapter 16. 16, we're going to pick it up at verse 25. As I told you, it says this right here. It says, Thou hast built thy high place on every head of the way. So as we're on this journey, I'm telling you what he's doing. We're on this journey. We're on the king's highway. And as we go by, every head of the way on every corner, they got a building. They got a pop tent. To get us, pull us in there. Hey, shh, come here, shh, come here. Come on in here. Rest your feet. And they get you in there and they made thy beauty, which is the word of God. That's his beauty. Is his word, is his laws. That's his beauty. That's why I said, it made thy beauty to be abhorred, and you make it hated. They get you in there and they can feed you all the lies. Man, what, 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 what did God say? <laughs> Man, don't let God fool you like that. I'm going to show you some things. You're going to be just like him. I'm going to show you some things. You're going to be just like God. Just like him. Really? Dude, just, dude, look at me. Tell you what, go look in the back. I got a, man, I got a brand new Mercedes that I just drove today. I got a Porsche, you know, Rolls Royce at the house. Bring you by later and show it to you. Just like God. Ask God where is his stuff. Have you ever seen God in his car? Yeah, I know you haven't. He probably broke. See, they push any kind of lie they need to to get you off the off the road. Said to make their beauty be a whore, and has opened thy feet to everyone that passes by, and multiplied thy whoredoms. This is what they do. So they built these things, and he already told you don't 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 get caught up. Don't get caught up. So. They had, they, had, they had to do this in a slick way. That's why I say he's, 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 he's nothing to play with. He is nothing to play with. But we're going to see this. We're going to go to Psalms chapter 74. Picking this up at verse 8. Because so, cause he, God had to run this a whole other way, which it was no different because he was planning on doing it anyway. That's why you don't change. He tell you, it says, they said in their hearts, let us destroy them together. They have burned up all. You see, they ain't saying some, all the synagogues of God's in the land. They done burned up all those places. Ain't none of those there. They all gone. And he didn't put them back up. Because he did something different. But the reason why they're gone, and that's why you don't see none of his prophets, none of his teachers in those buildings. So I want, I'm making myself real clear for you. The reason you don't see none in a building that's his, because he tells you. He tells you this. You see no more signs. There is no more profit. You ain't not in a building. Neither is there among us any that know of how long. None of them know how long this is going to take. But ain't no ain't none of his prophets in those buildings. Not none of his. Only ones in those buildings are Satan prophets. Them the only ones in there. Actually, watch this. <laughs> watch this. Why they in the building? Why they in the building? He asked the question. Oh God, how long shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme thy way forever? Telling you right there. They in there, they doing it constantly. How long are they gonna be in there doing that? How long are they gonna be in Lord, how long are you gonna let them do that in the building? It's just it's just like having a rat trap in a in a in a roach trap where you put a thing out there and they just go into the building and they never come out. 
See, because he already said plain as day. Don't go in the building. He said don't go in the building. But a lot of us still going to run there. And he's telling us right up front, don't, don't, go, don't go in there. You're going to get caught up. You're going to get caught up. Because he already told you. He said, if including providing any man hunger, you hungry from the word, let him learn at home. Let him eat at home. Now you got some preachers sitting there got that all screwed up too. But if you want to learn the word, you learn it at home. You learn it right at home as everyone hearing my voice. If you hunger, let him learn at home. That ye come not together unto condemnation. They don't, you don't know. <laughs> Go to the synagogues. Go to, the synagogue ain't nothing but a gathering place. Go to any church and you see them gathered together unto condemnation. Go to any one of them. They gather together unto condemnation. I don't care which one you go in. Because he already made it clear. If you want to learn, you learn at home. You want to learn, you learn at home. Because he said, I'm going to put this in you. I'm going to put it in you. In fact, let, let's, get, let's pull a little bit more here. Let's pull a little bit more here. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. I want to make this bigger because I want to make sure you see it all on one, on one page. Reason why he says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and the spirit of God. Remember that spirit of God we've been talking about? Jehovah, Christ. Remember we were talking about that? Same thing. The spirit of God dwelleth in you. Same one. So if you want to learn, you learn at home and he has his ways to where he's going to feed you. And right now we've been fed. And you ain't put up no money. Not a dime. But he said this. And he's making sure this is clear. In Christ, this is another thing. He don't change nothing, but watch, well, watch what he says here. He says this here, and you'll see it here. In Matthew 18, and it says this in chapter, in verse 20. 18 and verse 20. He's saying this, and he's really up front. He says, for where two or three... With two or three <clears throat> are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst of them. So the same thing is what they like to play with my numbers, my algorithm and everything on YouTube. Been doing it for years. It don't it don't bother me. We got more than 200 people showing here, but I promise you, if we go off, you'll see it's way more than that. However, we don't sit there and trip on that. He's telling you where there's two or three gathered in his way, there he is in the midst of them. I don't know how you can make it more clear for you. If you want to learn, you learn at home. And you guys are at home learning because he said this and he made sure this is clear he made sure this is clear we're going to look at this in um, Acts chapter 7 and, and just make sure we, we are all under the same thing 7 we're going to look at verse 48 7 48 And it says this. It says, How be it the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands, saith the prophet. He don't dwell in temples made with hands. 
But they done built these places on every head of the way. This is right up front. It's telling you right up. He said, where there are two or three are gathered, he's there in the mess. If you want to learn, you learn at home. They done burned up all the prophets. They done burned up all those tabernacles. They done burned up all the synagogues of God. In fact, if we drop down, let's look at this. Let's look at this. He actually going to say it again. We're going to look at 17. And we're going to see this to where we're just going to get this stuck in our head to make sure we understand it. We're going to make sure we understand this. In Acts chapter 17, verse 24, it says, God that made the world and all things therein sin, that he is the creator of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. He don't dwell in temples made with hands. So God did this this way for us to learn at home. So you had these other people where they get you in these buildings and they do something else. They work things a little bit different as they get you in the building. Once they get you in that building, they can do things a lot different. They can tell you whatever they want to tell you because now they got you off the King's Highway. They got you off that way. And once they get you that way, they got you. In Malachi chapter 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10, it says, they build up Zion with blood. They building up Israel with blood, including Jerusalem with iniquity, with all types of acts of sin. This is what they do. Any kind of way they can get you to put burdens on you to do these different types of things. That's what they're going to do. Because they, as long as they can get something out of it, they're good. This is what they do. And, and most of us keep overlooking that for what they're doing. We don't pay attention to it. We overlook it. We let them get away with whatever they want to get away with. It says this, and it, and it makes it even more clear for us as, as we go through it. It says, the heads thereof teach, because that's what judge is, teach for reward, because that's what they're doing. They're teaching you for a reward. They're teaching you for a reward. And it says, the priests thereof teach for hire. It says, and the prophets thereof divine for money. They're going to tell you all these things in the, in the churches and those pop tents and all these places. They're going to tell you all this stuff. And they're going to do it for money. They'll tell you, we don't, we don't do this for money. We got job. We got all this stuff. We do all these things. We don't do these things, but they're doing it for money. Well, we need this to go. We need to, no, you're doing it for money. Yet, well, they lean upon the Spirit of God and say, it's not the Spirit of God among us. None evil can come upon us. Really. Really. This is what we professionalized in doing. So they set themselves up and they make themselves look a certain way. And this is why they get us every time. You see, camps do it, churches do it, all of them do it. And they do this and we'll sit there and, oh yeah, they, they, they look holy. They look holy. And why it says, in no marvel, including no marvel. Don't marvel. But Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He can put on, all he got to do is put on a robe and you believe him. Put on a white collar, you believe him. They put on those costumes, you see them guys standing on the street corner, you believe them. It's 
sitting there and talking about you part of this congregation, you part of that congregation, you believe them. Man, we one of the biggest things in the world, you, you believe them. This is what happens. You done transformed into this angel of light and you done believed it. I don't care what they done did, whatever denomination they done fell under, if they fell under a Christian religion, you believe them. This is what happened. This is what people do. People catch. People say. We have to understand what's going on because all they have to do is transform and they got you. In fact, we got a little bit more here. It says this right here and it makes it clear. It makes it perfectly clear here. It says, for that reason, it is no great thing his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. The ancient and honorable is the head. The one that teaches the lines behind them is the, is the tail. It tells you clear as day in scripture. But they will sit there and tell you time and time and time again. They telling you what's right. And if any money is being transformed anywhere through that building, it's already telling you they're false. I don't care what you do. Because he said, when you go on this journey with me, don't you bring no money with you. I'm going to supply all your needs. I'm supplying everything. I'm taking care of everything. Don't you go get that other coat. I'm your coat. You're on this journey, don't take no two scripts and all this stuff. You try to get out these other blueprints and we screw up. This is why we had the problems we have. I'm going to show it to you again to make sure, make sure we clearly get this. I'm going to make sure we clearly get this all the way through. We're going to look at Mark. Chapter 6. We're going to look at verse 8. In verse 8, it says this. Make sure we clear again. He commanded them. He ain't asking you. He commanded them. Understand the forcefulness. He commanded them that they should not take nothing for their journey. You getting ready to roll with me? Don't you take nothing with you. Save a staff, only a staff, something you can lean on. No script, no bread, no money. Don't you bring that with you. But shout and sandals. That's all you're going to have with you. And not put on two coats. You can't have two different kinds, kinds of covering. You ain't coming in this way. And I want you to follow something that you're going to do. Because these people are going to show you something on what you're going to do. And he said this to make sure that we're really clear on this. Make sure you're real clear on this. First Peter, chapter 5, verse 2. It tells you this. It says, feed the flock of God. Don't you try to do anything other than that. Don't try to do anything other than that. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Taking oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre. Because he already told us, don't you take no money on your journey. So what you trying to do? You trying to bribe me? Is that what you trying to do, Tony? You trying to bribe me, Tony? Really? Not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but a ready mind. So it depends on you. It clearly depends on you. So the way it works is this. The way it works is this. As we're going through this. As we're going through this. We're going to look at Luke chapter 10. I'm going to show you something here. Luke chapter 10. We're going to run it right down the line for you. We're going to run it right down the line for you. Luke chapter 10. 
and we're going to pick it up at verse 35. We're going to run this right down the line. We're going to make sure this is perfectly clear for you. It's already highlighted. Already highlighted. It says this. It says on the morrow when he departed. So he departed, but now he departed, but we are still on this journey. Watch real carefully. Pay real close attention on how Christ is running this. He took out two pence. Think about it. He took out two pence. I'm only pausing for a fact. He took out two pence and gave them to the host and said to him, take care of him. Don't try to shepherd them. Don't try to be a lord over them. Don't try to fleece them. Don't try to do anything. Because my way is in you. And he's saying it, including whatsoever thou spendest more. So he's telling you, so if you got to spend more than what I gave you, you go in your pocket. Don't go in theirs because they don't have no money. Don't go in their pocket because they don't have nothing. So if you spend more, when I come again, I repay thee. That's the deal. That's the deal. So what happens there? So this is how you know who they are. This is how you know exactly who they are and there's no second guessing with it. In Matthew, in Jeremiah chapter 3, picking it up at verse 15, it tells you this. It may be bigger so it would be all on one page. It says, I will give you pastors. That host. That host. I'm going to give you pastors according to my heart. That host. In which shall feed you. You see, it's not lead you, not... Uh, rule you is it which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding not guide you anywhere he's going to give you some knowledge and he's going to give you some understanding how can I sit there and tell you to follow me into heaven and I, I ain't never been there let me tell you what we need to know so let's see let's, let's look again and see who they are Cause we're going to see, cause Satan always going to have the same. He going to, he going to do the same thing. Vice versa. He going to do the same thing. Vice versa. And we're going to see this here in, in Ephesians chapter four, picking up at verse 11, you're going to see what he gave and you're going to see other ones even use these positions. He says that he says, and he gave some apostles, some of, some of these guys are apostles. Some of these guys are prophets. Some are evangelists. Some are pastors and teachers. For perfecting other saints for the work of the ministry and edifying the body of Christ. Telling you this. Right up front. Right up front. And you see people will sit there. And when you look at verse 8, it says, Wherefore, when he said, and he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. To feed you with this knowledge and understanding. So as we on this highway. And we're going down this road. We need to make sure we paying attention because as I said, many people going to hate us for it. Because you traveling the King's Highway. In Mark chapter 13, verse 13, it says this and never forget it. That's why I said they can't they can't sit there. They'll tell you once save always say they're telling you a bold faced, unadulterated, low down lie. It says, Ye shall be hated of all men, not some men, all men, for my ways' sake, for his name's sake, for his ways. But he that shall endure until the end. As you on that road, they're gonna spit at you, they're gonna do everything as you on that king's highway. Throwing bottles and cans. You just picture that. They're not physically, but that's what's going on. They're going to ridicule you in all kinds of ways. You endure to the end. 
the same shall be saved. Because Satan offering you the ways of this world and making sure you can have the ways of this world. He just showed you the ways of this world. That's Jesus. That's salvation in his eyes where you can fornicate and adultery and all these things. That's his salvation that he can get you to. Because all Jesus means on what many people fail to realize is all it means is salvation. Nothing more and nothing less. Nothing more and nothing less. But this is what they have done. They sit there and they don't think it's two Jesus in the Bible. Satan says, all you have to do is fall down and worship me. And I'm going to give you salvation the way I see it. And people have not realized that's Jesus. That's salvation of flesh. Clear in scripture. So what we're going to do, we're going to stop here. But I will tomorrow. We'll be going through Romans on King James Bible University. I appreciate everybody that came over. And same as I said, we have some gentlemen over here from Church of Christ. And as I said, they, they, they said these things. And I said I was going to stay on announce it. And it said Church of Christ. It says your doctrine is in error and it's a total lie. I was very upfront with you guys the first time. So same thing I said. And same thing some of you guys got fearful about about the whole issue altogether. But as I said, the same thing with the Church of Christ. We have some of the leaders, which was one is Keith, one is Henry uh, Stevenson, or Robert Johnson, and a Stephen. And as I said, the Javier, the, the Latino guy, I care not to talk to him because he has nothing to do with the Bible. And the same thing is, you see down there below in the comment section, you can see right there, it has a link there where you can come right there and directly into the back and we can schedule a day to meet. It can be Monday through Thursday as you guys want because you guys tell them out that what I teach is an error and I'm telling you, if you're a Christian and you're the Church of Christ, your entire doctrine is flawed and it is a lie throughout your entire Reformation. I'm very upfront and it's on, it's recorded. And this is going to be recorded and it will stay there. So you come in the back, we can schedule a date. And same thing, most people know, you can sit there and go on any place and tell them out that he want to be fighting and this and that. People know my demeanor and everything else. I give you the utmost respect in the back. But everything that's going to go on, I'm going to make sure it's live. I'm going to make sure it's recorded. To where you can't wiggle out of it. Because as I said. You guys had my name in your mouth. But just as I told you guys before. I'm not a camp. And I'm not your regular church people that you think about. But you grabbed hold to the wrong one. You grabbed hold onto a full blown lion. That you thought that you had. Backed in a corner somewhere. Thinking you just talking about it. But as it came to me. And you see right here. I'm letting you know right up front, your doctrine is an error and a lie. That's my email. I would be more than happy to talk with any one of you guys. But when we do anything, we're going to be live. Because one of the main ones, what he wanted to do is, he just wanted to talk about how to be saved and wouldn't, didn't want me to pick not one topic. Because that's showing me again that you're weak in scripture. If you can't sit there and be solid on what you know, then you saying yourself, you don't know scripture. So my thing is open again. So you see that link down there where you go on the questions and answers because you go, cause it's going to be open up as soon as I come off. You come back there, we can schedule it up before I get ready to do the, um, do all those things there. And then we will go on through this and, and then I do my question and answer afterwards. So with that, and then tomorrow we'll be going through um, Romans on King James Bible University. So I wish that each and every person you understood what was going on and why it's to Jesus in the Bible. 
because Jesus is nothing but salvation. So it's the salvation, how you see it. Either you're going to travel on the journey with Christ, where you're going to go through this world, trying to get to the other side, or you're going to stop and get salvation that's here. Because that's all Jesus is, but most people always keep trying to put it on a man. And it's no, at no time spoke about a man. So until next time, I say to each and every person, Shalom. to be home.